So the International Booker Long List 2024 is literally just a couple of hours away from being announced. And I thought I would bring you a video right under the radar of the announcement. So I have read six out of the 13 books. So let's get talking about them. Hi, my name is Kim and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If I am new to you, I am a lover of literary fiction as well as book prizes, <laughs> including the uh, Booker Prize, the International Booker, the Woman's Prize, and Canada Reads. So let's get talking about the 13 books and which six I am hoping will be on the list. So I'm going to start with the, the six books that I've read and whether or not I think that they are going to make the long list. So the first one that I tackled was The Silver Bone by Andrei Kirkov from the Ukraine. And it's translated from the Russian by Boris Draglek. This is the first book in a series and it is all sorts of genres. This book is very much all over the place and very, very quirky. There's a little bit of magical realism, which is done very, very well. This is a mystery thriller. It's very suspenseful. It is also historical fiction. It's set in 1919. And what I loved the best about this book was the sense of place that it evoked and the, um, location really came alive for me and I'm not a big fan of historical fiction so this was going to be a tough read for me to begin with and um, I enjoyed it but I don't think it's going to make the long list I think it's too trying to be too many different things and while this will always be a spoiler free review of the books uh, this had the most disappointing ending on the face of the earth for me. Um, there were a couple of tricks that um, I didn't think were done very well. There was always a mention of whenever the electricity was out, it was because it was out of firewood and I really thought that was going to lead somewhere. And of course, when you're reading from the point of view of the fact that this is a mystery that needs to be solved, you're reading into everything double, a little bit extra um, to try to solve the mystery. And I didn't think that was done very well. Uh, for those of you in North America, his book, um, which I'm going to put the title right here, uh, from, that was long listed last year, is being published in North America at the end of August of this year. And I have pre-ordered it because I really am interested in reading more of him. So the second book that I read was um, Karos by Jenny Erpek from Germany, and it was translated by Michael Hoffman, and I listened to it on audiobook from Lisa Flanagan. And let me tell you, if this wasn't on the long list, I would have DNF'd this book. I really felt that this was just an investigation of a sexual predator. It is about... Um, the relationship of main character who is 19, who has a, an affair with a married man who is 30 years older than she is. And I really felt that it just went on and on and on and on about how he was abusing her in order to control her and that she was too young to figure this out. What I did like about this book was the parallel that the author made between the turbulence of um, Germany and Russia in the uh, when the wall comes down in the 80s um, and the connections that they made to socialism and communism that paralleled this abusive relationship but I really didn't enjoy it so I am not putting it on the list 
Uh, the next one I read was Lost on Me by Veronica Romero from Italy, and it was translated by Lee Janetsko. And I listened to it on audiobook by, and it was uh, narrated by Carlotta Breton. And this is a bit of a satire. It's a bit of a farce. It's very lighthearted and funny. It's told from the point of view of the main character, Veronica, who is coming of age and how she's always in the shadow of her older brother. And while I enjoyed it, I didn't think it was great. And it it never went over the top in, in terms of the satire, but it felt a little bit forced at times. So I'm not going to put that one on the list. The next one I read was The Details by uh, Aya Enberg from Sweden, and it was translated by Kira Joffson, and I listened to it on audiobook by Julie Maisie. And I was really reluctant to start this book because it is, I think it's sort of been misrepresented as a fever dream book. So I was thinking that this was going to be um, you know, something that I would have to listen to very, very carefully, not that that's a problem, but that it would be very fragmented, I guess is what I'm trying to say, in that this woman who has a fever it opens up when she's uh, reaching for a book and there's a notation in the book and, and she goes back into her memories. And I thought that she would be resurfacing and plunging down with the fever, but it's not like that at all. In fact, it's the exact opposite. This is a very quiet, meditative book. It almost reads like a memoir. Um, it is a lot about writing. Uh, it takes place over four parts, and each part is a different person that she's reflecting back on. If anything, I really wanted there to be more of this beautifully quiet, well-written novel. I wish that um, the author had written um, more about the relationship with the main character's uh, children. That I mean, maybe that'll be a sequel. But I'm not going to put it on the list, um, even though it is a fantastic book. I highly recommend it. Uh, five out of five stars. Um, I really think that it's not going to make the long list because the judges announced that the theme of these books and what they're looking for are books that speak of courage and kindness, of the vital importance of community, and of the effects of standing up to tyranny. And there's just no standing up to tyranny in this book. So while it is beautiful and lovely and I thoroughly enjoyed every minute of it, I'm not. I'm going to say it's not going to make the list. The next book I read was Not a River by Selva Amada, and it is uh, translated by Annie McDermott. Selva Amada is from um, Argentina, and I found out from the uh, translator's note in the back of the book that this is part of a loose trilogy. So there is a book called Brickmakers and the wind that lays waste. So after book prizes are over, I'm definitely going to try to get my hands on copies of those books because part of my reading goals for this year is to read more uh, backlisted books from authors that I love. And let me tell you, I loved this book. Um, it is about a group of friends. It opens up with a tragedy that is could happen or could be avoided and then it meanders back into the past in which something tragic on a river happened involving uh, those men and it is absolutely beautifully written um i couldn't put it down and as you can see i think it's the, one of the shortest books on on the list but um i would highly recommend i'm not going to talk about it too much because i don't want to give very much of it away but literally there isn't a word out of place on, with this book and i am going this is going to be my first choice um for the shortlist announcement this is one of the books that i will absolutely be looking for so the next book i read was crooked Plow by 
Itamar Verna Jr. Uh, from Brazil and translated by Johnny Lorenz. And what an absolutely stunning cover. And let me tell you, this was another five star read. I actually put this book down for quite some time because I was in the last section of it and I didn't think that there was any way that the author was going to be able to tell one side of the story and I really wanted to hear that side of the story but he did and did it in a beautifully profound way so this is a multi-general uh, generational book which I can't believe you can do that in such a, a short time space it starts off with two sisters who are the main characters of the book who discover their grandmother's knife and something horrific happens um, and it is about uh, the subsistence farmers in Brazil, which is really slavery and what those generations do to try to make their life better and rise up against everything that is beating them down. Um, absolutely stunning, beautifully told. The only tiny little criticism, and it's more criticism of my reading, is that some of the names of the characters were so similar, I lost track of who was who. And all I had to do was write it down on a post-it note so I could refer back to it, but I didn't. But beautifully, beautifully book. The title, which I'm not going to give away to you, is stunning. You read the book just to figure out why it's called Crooked Plow. So that's why I'm going to make this the number two choice. And those are all the, or not number two, but that's the second of what I'm going to be looking for tomorrow when the long list is listed. Now, the next couple of books I haven't read, um, but I have read a couple of um, chapters or paragraphs. The only one I can't get in um, a hold of is White Nights by Ursula Honeck from Poland, and it's translated by Kate Webster. Now, I'm going to um, predict that this one, or I'm going to say that my wish list for the shortlist will be this book. Even though I haven't been able to read anything from it, everything about this choice just ticks all the boxes for me. She is a poet. This is a debut. There are 13 interconnected short stories. And while I'm not a huge short, short story fan, the interconnected short stories can be absolutely amazing. Um, and each of the 13 stories focuses on a different character. This has been called artistic and moving. So that's my third choice. My fourth choice, and I was able to read um, a couple of pages, is going to be Mater 210 by Huang Suk Young, translated from Korean by Sarah Kim Russell and Young J. Josephine Bay. Now, the reason why I'm picking this is he is one of Korea's most renowned authors. He was also long listed in 2019. And it is a multi generational epic tale that covers over 100 years of Korean history. Um, and it is the grossest opening to a novel I have read in a very long time. So this is an author who is not afraid to go to uncomfortable places very, very quickly. So I'm hoping to see that on the list. The next one I would like to see on the list, and this literally arrived at my front door this morning. For those of you in North America, this was just released at the end of March, and it is Simpatia by Rodrigo Blanco Calderon. It is translated by uh, Noel Hernandez Gonzalez, and Daniel Hahn. It is about the mass exodus of Venezuela, and um, it is about a man who has been abandoned by his wife, and how he forms connections with dogs that have left behind. Um, and it says on the front that um, uh, Blanco Cardion speaks to us of dogs and men, of their struggle for survival, of their pain, and of their hope. And the first couple chapters that I read, I can't wait to keep reading it. This might actually be my next read. Okay. 
So one spot left, and I'm going to kind of break the rules because this last pick is, I think, a little bit controversial. And um, I am going to partially pick A Dictator Calls by Ismail Kaderi. It is translated from the Russian by John Hodgson. And he was the winner of the first uh, International Booker in 2005. It is a three minute conversation between a poet and a dictator. And I find that very intriguing, especially in relation to the theme that the judges have chosen and what they're looking for. Now, um, why I think this is a controversial choice, and I think that that's obvious, is this is a Russian author, and I don't know if the judges will consider that and be a little political, but maybe not. Um, I hope not. I hope it's it's judged fairly, but it's also a sli- it's also um, a slippery slope. I think that. Uh, you know, when you've got an author on the long list from the Ukraine and another one from uh, Russia, um, it, it can it can go to places it shouldn't in a book prize that really shouldn't be political. So I am going to say that a dictator calls us half of a vote, and the other one that I would really like to see is the House on Via Gemento by Dominic. Starnoni, and it's translated from Italy from Unan Stranitsky. And I would really like to see this more because I read the first couple pages and I think that this will be absolutely um, in my field house, I guess is what I'm trying to say. It is a uh, been called a masterpiece of contemporary Italian literature and it takes place in um, Nepal, I believe. Um, about a son who is trying to escape the shadow of his father. And uh, I'm hoping to see that. It's another chunkster as well. So those are my six and a half, seven choices. I still have to read uh, What I'd Rather Not Think About by Gente Postuma, translated by uh, Sarah Timmer Harvey. And I'm looking forward to reading Undiscovered by Gabriella um, Liner and it's translated by Julia Sanchez. So those are my choices. I cannot wait for tomorrow morning and there will definitely be a um, reaction video on my part. So thank you so much for joining me once again. I apologize for my absence and that I didn't do individual reviews of all of the books, but life happens while you're making plans and I'm playing catch up right now. But thanks for joining me. I appreciate your time. Please like and subscribe and hit the bell if you want notifications every time I upload a video. So I will see you for the shortlist in just a couple of hours. Bye.